Hello everybody. Welcome back to the train room. It's Mike and welcome back to the channel. And check out the cool shirt. My youngest daughter, Abby, uh, was so thoughtful this Christmas. Uh, this was my favorite gift. She took the time. I didn't even ask for this. Uh, those are the best gifts ever. The small ones that someone put some thought into understanding what's important to you and uh, maybe what you're into and they get you that gift. So I hope everybody else had as good a Christmas as I did or Hanukkah uh, or whatever holiday you celebrate. And uh, you all had a happy new year because that is a universal thing for us is a great new year, time for resolutions. And um, one of my resolutions, I'm sure some of you have seen because I've been getting a lot of questions, is selling off a lot of my collection. Um, so I am selling off a lot of my collection. The rumor is true. And I know a lot of you have seen my Facebook Marketplace post uh, for things for sale and have run into me at the train show recently, you know, yesterday, and um, uh, asking, so what's going on? Why am I selling my collection? Well, it's multiple reasons. Um, reason number one is uh, I over collected and you can't even walk around my basement and I have a storage unit now and I have trains in my garage. Um, I just went crazy. I didn't stick to road name. I didn't stick to era. I didn't stick to, you know, the, the pre-war, post-war, modern, MPC. I just sort of went crazy. I started, you know, and everything is bought over the last five years. Um, and just blew up. Like, you know, sold my Dodge Viper, sold a Corvette and um, C7 Corvette and took the money and bought a bunch of trains. Now... I want to buy a uh, order, a backdraft Cobra replica, the 427 550 horsepower engine, I think is the package I want. And so selling my trains gives me room to expand into the other room. It gives me funds to order my Cobra and it is alleviating some frustration because uh, uh, as you've seen, almost everything I've listed so far has been Lion L. Uh, because I am just no longer a fan of Lion L. Um, I am of the post-war stuff. And I am of the things that I already have that work. So let's, let's clarify that. But I will not be uh, a Lion L customer any longer. Because I really feel that uh, Lionel's quality control has gone into the toilet. I mean, out of my uh, last last 11 steam locomotives, whether it's Vision Line, Legacy, or Lion Chief. Um, so we did buy a Polar Express uh, Bluetooth 5.0 set last year to run on a Christmas layout. And it was even messed up. Even the Elf train was messed up. I mean, that's just a little, that's like a little tank engine, like a 060. Not a lot of detail, but they still managed to mess up the finish and it didn't run out of the box. Um, let alone uh, the Mohawk that I ran, double headed, did a video. That was the only run I got out of it before it stopped working. Uh, next, next time I put it on the track, it would first just go in reverse and it was doing the blinking cab light of death telling you something's wrong and um, then it wouldn't even go in reverse no more and it wouldn't smoke or and then my Pat's Trains Northern 1 of 25 um, you know that one ran all of like three minutes before it spon spontaneously combusted and smoke pouring out of it and apparently some wrong board that is a known issue um, runs too hot and allows the smoke unit to melt everything inside of it. Um, I, I had several friends that I know have had that same issue out of their Northerns, whether it was the uh, Frisco or one of the Santa Fe's that they ordered uh, out of like the 2018, 2019, I can't remember, um, catalog. And, um, you know, Lionel didn't do a recall. And then Lionel won't let the local guy fix them anymore so i had to ship that all the way back to lionel right after that happened so we're going back almost two years on this problem and um you know they damaged the locomotive uh 
they left parts off the locomotive. When it was shipped back, they didn't put all the shipping pieces back that hold the locomotive from moving. So when I got it back, the cow catcher was bent, the cab was up by about a quarter inch from where it should normally sit, and I had to take it all apart, fix everything, carefully unbend everything. But they didn't send back the magnets to the sand dome cover uh, that goes over your controls. And, you know, I've been going back and forth and back and forth for two years trying to get two little magnets. And they were there when I sent it in. You know, I have a video of me, like, showing when I'm first running the motor that the locomotive and programming it, um, that they're there. But every time you took off that cover, the magnet stayed with it. And you have to pull the magnets off and realign them, try to push them back down in the hole and put it back on. And whoever worked on it did not do that. Um, and then they also scratched the boiler and broke the little nub off of the uh, generator. So now I came buy a new generator because it's a glossy paint finish. Um, so it's just going to have to be how it is, right? Um, the new generator wouldn't really match too well because it's going to be like a satin black versus that glossy black. Um, anyway, so that's another horror story. But then the last horror story that was really the straw that broke the camel's back was they lost that mohawk. So it was gone forever. And, you know, they're always, oh, we've got it, we're, we see, you know, we see you, we should have it here. Like, obviously, you know, there's a tracking number. You guys got it like two months ago. Um, so, and going back and forth on that, in the meantime, they send me back a locomotive. And shop calls me, hey, Mike, your locomotive's back. I go get it. I'm like, that doesn't look like my box. I'll take it anyway. And he's like, yeah, take it, because they've got yours lost. Maybe they sent you something different or something. So I get home, open it up, and it is a total trashed uh, GS2 Vision Line uh, locomotive, brass hybrid. And um, I already had one sort of messed up, <laughs> and this one was really messed up. Um, looks like someone had taken and like looked like glued on all of the railings again and didn't use like any uh take any care in doing that because there's big big globs of glue around every place where something was attached and I was like and this the whistle was gone broke off in the box and I was like whoo if this was my engine I would be ticked um uh, hoping that's not Lionel's repair version on that, or maybe the owner did that or something, but at any rate, um, Lionel ended up giving me a call because they figured out they sent a wrong locomotive somewhere, and I was like, hey, I was expecting your call, and, you know, the service manager, um, I can't remember his name, he's like, yeah, you know, would you mind sending that back? I go, hey, it's a good time to talk because I have some open cases with you guys. And um, I don't mind sending this engine back at all. It does not mind. Someone paid a lot of money for this engine. And, you know, they should get their chance to be happy with their engine. <laughs> so sooner the better. I said, send me a label and I'll send it back. But before I do that, I need some help with my open issues. I said, I need a new wire harness for the Polar Express. This is the fourth time I've asked you guys for one because when they originally built it, it was stretched so tight that you couldn't even get the plug to stay all the way. And then it tore some of the little tiny, if you ever opened up a Lion Chief, I think they use the thinnest gauge wire. It's like a piece of hair is your wire. So it gets torn um, at the factory. And when we get it out of the box, it doesn't even run. And uh, call Lionel, they didn't have a harness, so I extended all the wires so the plugs could go in right. And we got it running, but now it's got extended wires in it. I said, give me the right harness. Well, we don't have the harness. Okay. So, so I had, uh, I bought two sets of the Norfolk Southern uh, executive trains. You know, the one that has like 13 cars and four engines. I said, I bought two sets of those. One of my sets... Um, the A unit is missing both brake lines. The B unit, they didn't have the little, like, uh, circle washers that the magnets hold the uh, hatch cover on with 
over the controls. And by the way, that hatch cover was loose in shipping and scratched the hell out of the top of the locomotive. I know. He said, well, we don't do anything on locomotives when they're damaged in shipping. I go, uh, I figured that. I said, but at least give me the parts that's missing. Um, I can always weather one of them. I have two sets of them. Um, so he's like, well, let's just talk about you giving us back that locomotive you have that's not yours. I'm like, really? I'm like, that's where you're going to take this conversation there. And I have something you want and you've not helped me on things that are under warranty or things that you have done as a company, uh, two things that were under warranty. And, you know, I'm not asking for anything extra. I'm just asking for what any consumer would want. And that's for you to honor your warranty, you to supply me with the parts that we're missing and make the, the products I've purchased in good faith acceptable to me. And well, they're just toys. And I'm like, they're just what? My parents never bought me toys that cost four grand ever, right? They, my first car didn't even cost four grand. So, you know, I, I was just like, hey, when you're ready to have a serious conversation here, and, you know, actually give me some customer service. Um, we'll continue this conversation. Till then, I'm done. Hung up. Next day, I get a call from a private number. Unlisted, I, I pick it up. I'm like, hmm. Hi, is this Mike Lavasco? Well, yes, it is. Hey, this is Gerald Adams. I'm the director of North American Sales for Lionel. I understand you had a bad experience yesterday with one of my customer service managers. I'm like, yes, I did. And he's like, well, tell me what's going on. I'm going to listen to everything you have to say because uh, I want to take it to the board and let them know about your experience. And, you know, I said, you know, Gerald, you know, I've spent 50 grand with your company in the last year and a half. He said, it has nothing to do with the 50 grand. What it has to do with is quality control of your products. I don't care if it would have been one product. Say I bought one of your $149 cabooses now, and it's missing something. I expect it to be resolved. I said, and that could be the only product I buy for you in two years, but I would want that product to be right. So the fact that I have bought, you know, over 50 grand worth of stuff in a year and a half, um, and almost everything has had something wrong with it, I'm spending more time dealing with Lionel and shipping stuff back and forth than I ever even get to use it. And then I'm told it's just toys, that I'm being too picky. I'm like, this is a collectible, this is an adult toy, and this costs a lot of money. And I'm a stickler. I don't, my collection of used stuff that I've bought secondhand, none of it has the problems that my brand new stuff has. And if I buy a new MTH engine, I'm not going through this. I buy a new Atlas engine, I'm not going through this. I bought new third rail engines and I'm not going through this. Um, you know, this is just unacceptable. So anyways, like long story short, so I'm not boring you guys. Well, you know, first of all, I knew it's going to be a problem when he calls me from a private number. That means he gets a whole lot of complaints. You know, I, I've been in um, technology industry and communication industry and, you know, uh, executive levels and, um, you know, usually you're open to talking to your customers. If they make it to that level and they're talking to you, you should want to help them out, right? Because something's going really, really wrong if you have to go up the ladder that much. Um, and, you know, I'd, I'd never leave an issue unresolved. But I've never had to face an issue like this either. I've always had quality products. And, um, you know, never this defect rate or uh, manufacturing problems like they're having so anyway so Gerald and I part ways on the phone he sends me a $150 gift card I mail back the engine he says send the email recap to talk to us I've already been talking to talk to us all the time and I do that and then um, they end up finding my engine and send it back three weeks later and um, I never hear back again from Gerald I haven't sent him a LinkedIn request and he didn't accept it and I'm cool level had a guy I'm not going to get out of shape cussing and you know ranting and raving you know like I said uh you know I, I've been around a long time and you know you track more bees with honey um 
anyway, uh, a month later, I get your case is closed to talk to us. So I call back, I said, hey, you know, Gerald is supposed to be tracking me down some brake lines, a wire harness, figuring out what's, what he wants to do about uh, this Northern you guys really tore up that was one of 25. Um, you know, possibly buying it back for me, um, since it's your guys' fault, it's so messed up, and it's really, in my opinion, I don't want it no more. Uh, and then also, he knows I don't want to do any further business with Lionel, and you're supposed to, uh, you know, get my pre-orders canceled through your distributor that is supplying them to my local train shops. I don't want my local train shop stuck with my pre-orders, because he wouldn't have ordered these. He doesn't order stuff like this. Um, you know, he typically stocks some MTH and maybe a few Lionel diesels, but, um, you know, he doesn't buy, uh, a Vision Line Class A to sell or a big 5011 steamer or, you know, uh, the Santa Fe ABBA or Southern Pacific ABBA set, um, that I, or so it's about eight grand of stuff I didn't want him stuck with. Anyway, um, never heard back from Gerald. He never called me still. And this is like oh, three weeks ago. And so I started posting my stuff for sale on Facebook Marketplace at the beginning of January. So my resolution is I'm not dealing with them no more. And um, I'm going to start selling off some of my stuff that's not as important to me. And the majority of it is newer Lionel. Rest assured, none of it has any problems. Um, a lot of it is still brand new in box. I wouldn't know if it has a problem uh, in some cases. Um, but I'm happy. So I'm listing everything, uh, you know, local pickup. You can come over, run it on my layout. We can meet at Lionel Club. We can meet at Switch Stand. We can meet at Great Train Show. And, um, you can check it out. If you choose to open it up and run it, we'll know right there if it's got a problem or not. Um, you know, because a lot of my stuff I bought just to collect. And I have sold my red Commodore Vanderbilt. Um, I sold one of my uh, F7 um, Norfolk Southern Executive Train sets and um, a lot of stuff. I mean, the list goes on and on. My Texas Special set. Uh, now, me and that guy text back and forth all the time. He's really loving that set. Um, but anyway, that's an update on what's been going on with me and why no more Lionel. And... Um, you know, anyone that's interested in anything, feel free. I'm, you know, Michael Lavasco on uh, Facebook. So you can send me a message there. Or you can see my listings and message me on there. Um, if there's anything you're interested in, nope, I'm not giving it away. I've bought everything in the last five years. I know what its values are. This isn't a fire sale desperation or recently widowed or selling off my dad or grandpa's collection that I don't even understand the value of for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar to some flippers. Because believe me, they've come out of the woodwork trying to get my collection. And I'm just like, nope, nope, nope. Um, that's my update for today. Again, not getting out of trains, just going down a little bit, maybe to some certain roads. And, uh, you know, I will keep some of my Lionel that I really love, but things that I just collected just to have and never really use, that's going to be a thing of the past. Um, if it's not on my shelves, uh, it's sitting in boxes and I never have any intention of ever opening it and running it. That's what's going up for sale. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of ranting and raving. You know, 2023, I'm going to learn all the fly in, fly out, add some music, all this crazy stuff these other YouTubers are doing. But I really like it to be more conversational, like you're right here in my room with me. And we're just hanging out. I know we're all long distance most of the time. But um, just shooting the breeze, so to speak, and uh, running some trains and talking about trains. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you all next time. See ya.